It doesn't really bother me to go around and make sure that all the little things are done. And so, to be a fully devoted follower of Christ, we must be committed to God. And secondly, we must be competent in God's Word. In the last two weeks, we talked about what it really meant to be competent in God's Word. And this morning, I want to move us toward the third of the principles of being a fully devoted follower of Christ, and that is to be competent in our walk. We're to be committed to God, competent in God's Word, and competent in our walk. I want to turn your attention to the book of Ephesians in the New Testament. I'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. That will be part one of a winning walk. But I want to read a portion of chapter 2, just to give us a little background. It says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked. Somebody say formerly. You can say it at home. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, that is the sons of disobedience, among them we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. This is our formal state that we formerly lived in. He says, you formerly lived in the lust of your flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. You were born as children of wrath. When you were born you were born in sin, you were born as an enemy of God, even as the rest. But God, verse 4, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and seated, seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in the kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. You might notice the number of times that you see with Christ or in Christ or through Christ. Verse 7 again, so that in the ages to come that he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Verse 8, for by grace you have been saved in faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. This morning I want to talk about a winning walk. A winning walk. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. We'll be looking at verse 1 through 16. Now here in the book of Ephesus, and we talked through this in Bible study, here in Ephesus, Paul, and in the first three chapters, he is giving great theology. He's talking about the believer's welfare, the doctrine of the believer here in chapters 1, 2, and 3 of Ephesians. He is primarily talking about doctrine. He's talking about the believer's welfare, his eternal plan, God's loving provision, and, and his special production of taking the Jews and Gentiles and making them one people. Heavenly, suited in theology, chapters 1, 2, and 3 here in the book of Ephesians. But chapter 4 through 6 
prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Now what has he called us to? I want you to just look back a few chapters in chapters 1 of Ephesians. It's important for you to understand this as a believer. All
to die on the cross. He who had no sin became sin for us that we might be called the righteousness of God. We became his sons. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been redeemed. He says we have redemption through his blood. And check this out. The forgiveness of our trespasses. That is God
and then he seals us. He seals us until the day of redemption. And what that means is that when he calls us, he is able to keep us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. He seals us until the day of redemption. So if you're saved, then you can have assurance of knowing that he who calls you is able to keep you. In him, you after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise who was given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession. Here it is again, to the praise of his glory. I'm not all the way through chapter one, but I'm going to go back to chapter four. Just
We're to walk worthy of our calling. We must walk with humility. We must walk with grace, walk with love, and walk with unity. Verse 7 and 8 lets us also know that we're to walk in our giftedness. Walk in your giftedness. Make no mistake that every believer that has been called, everyone that has been called by Christ, he has given you a gift, and your gift is to benefit the body of Christ. Your gift is not for you. In fact, you can say it right where you are. My gift is not for me. Say it again. My gift is not for me. But to each of us, each one of us, that is, the ones who have been called, the ones who have been sanctified, the ones who have been sealed, the ones who have been placed in the heavenly grounds with Christ. He says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. And what that means is, Be wary of those who call themselves apostles and they're giving you a new 
And people, unlike any other time, no different than any other time, people didn't want to hear what the prophet had to say, so they killed the prophets. In fact, the prophet in the Old Testament sense didn't have the, the privilege of being able to change the message or, or having a quote-unquote creative license like Hollywood. They had to say what God said. And if they didn't say what God said, they were considered a false prophet. And if they were considered a false prophet, they were stoned to death. God gave these gifted people to the church. Are there prophets 